This is Tar Heel Talk, an in-depth look at the issues and people making news in North Carolina. Here's your host, Sonia Williams. Memorial Day weekend marks the unofficial kickoff to summer and summer activities, from swimming to grilling and a host of activities in between. Well, today's expert is here to tell us how to enjoy these fun activities and stay safe while doing them. She is Kelly Ransdale, Regional Education Specialist with the National Fire Protection Association. Kelly, welcome to Tar Heel Talk. Thank you. Summer is approaching. I can imagine this is a gorgeous weekend. People are grilling and just getting ready for all those wonderful family gatherings this Memorial Day weekend. But there are a lot of things we need to keep in mind and when it comes to staying safe and grilling. So let's talk a little bit about um, some of the things we need to keep in mind to stay safe. Okay. So uh, spring cleaning, uh, this is going to be the kickoff for all the things we should have done prepping for the summer. Mm -hmm. But uh, this weekend, people will fire up their grills, whether it be charcoal or even a gas grill. And so there's some things to keep in mind when you get ready to crank up your grill to keep everyone safe, um, the person doing the grilling and your entire family long mm -hmm. after you're finished cooking. Right. So what's the first step? What are some things that, um, let's say, well, first of all, charcoal versus gas grills and that's a big argument in my house <laughs> which which one is better um, but I'm going to ask which one is safer well they can both be equally safe uh, the key is to use them safely and to make sure that the equipment that you're using them in is in good condition so you want to first inspect your grill and that is whether it's gas whether it's charcoal make sure it's in good working order make sure that no um, varmints have made a nest in it over mm -hmm. the winter because when you light it up that can cause an issue but basically taking it cleaning it out um, making sure that it's in working order and then you know if you're using a charcoal grill a um, little bit different because you can ignite it and make sure that it's attended but with a propane or a gas grill you want to make sure that you take a few more steps to keep it in in good working order okay so you're going to of course um, make sure that your connections are properly secured and if you're starting it for the first time you want to hook it up um, you want to turn it on and there's a really easy test that you can do to make sure that that propane is not leaking from the tank and that is you can spray just some soapy water on mm -hmm. the line connector and it will bubble if the propane is coming out. So that's okay. a great thing to do to make sure that connection is working. Mm -hmm. And then one of the main things is um, when you ignite that grill to make sure if it has a self starter that it starts once you turn turn it on that it starts. Um, if you didn't have that and you turn the propane on and you try to ignite it and it doesn't do it immediately then you want to wait and make sure that you let all of that propane dissipate for five or ten minutes um, before you mm -hmm. go back and try to light anything because it can be an explosion risk. Right, that's extremely so that's, important. It is, and that's one of the first things is just make sure that the equipment is in good working order. Mm -hmm. So then when you get ready to cook, um, you of course want to make sure that it's not anywhere near your railings. You want to have it on a non-flammable surface, and I know that's not very convenient, but right. if you had a brick patio mm -hmm. or cement, where um, it wouldn't burn because it's really dangerous and that's why in a lot of places they prohibit you using a grill on a wood deck mm -hmm. because if it were to um, a fire to start in it it can ignite the whole deck and then that may prevent you from being able to get out of your home if you had that so for all of those people planning to cook on their wooden decks this weekend no they should move it um, <laughs> they should move it to a safe place mm -hmm. and then we always say for pets and for children leave about a three foot area that's the safe zone um, from cooking because it is so easy to trip um, if you put three feet around it each way um, it gives you a buffer to protect you from any hazards that might come from that grilling and then if you follow those steps um, enjoy your food of choice and, and have a great mm -hmm. Memorial Day grilling mm -hmm. out and then for the rest of the summer too that should be part of your checklist each time you start your grill is make sure it's in good working order make sure it's um, in a safe zone mm -hmm. and then cook away. Right. And people can find out more information about grilling tips. There's a wonderful uh, wealth of information on the website that will just give you videos and lots of information. That is nfpa.org forward slash grilling. Um, and again, lots of information to, um, to give people tips on how to do that properly. Yeah. I know that for a lot of um, people throughout the summer, there are concerns about 
power outages during hurricanes or really bad storms. Right. And that's something and people will take out the grill to, mm -hmm. to cook the meat that's thawing because there's no power. But there's also some precautions that people need to keep in mind when doing that. There are. Um, we have had instances where people have brought um, their grills inside, whether they be a gas grill or a charcoal grill, and unfortunately, they emit carbon monoxide. Mm -hmm. Carbon monoxide is a colorless and odorless um, gas. It's the same composition as air, and so you won't be able to smell it, you won't be able to see it. But if you get a little bit of carbon monoxide for a long period of time, or a lot in a small amount of time, it can be deadly. And a lot of times people may have flu-like symptoms. Um, you may start feeling flushed. Um, people start getting sick. And um, anytime that happens, um, we, of course, want you to take precautions and make sure be seen by a physician or go to the emergency room because something may be making you sick. Um, but in these hurricanes, if you bring your grill out, you got to make sure that you always have it outdoors um, because mm -hmm. if not, um, that carbon monoxide can be deadly. And so there are some things you can do to protect yourself. One is uh, carbon monoxide alarms are a life-saving tool. And that is you want to make sure that you get a carbon monoxide alarm that uh, you would have on each level of your home. Okay. You would traditionally put it um, in the hallway between your bedrooms because most of the time um, you may not, you would go to sleep and mm -hmm. then unfortunately you might not wake up. And so we use that as a guide for where to put these. Um, in addition, if you have an attached garage um, with the new self-starters on cars, sometimes people have thought that they lock their car, that is true. but they actually mm -hmm. start their car in the garage. And in Raleigh, we had a couple that lost their life from that. Mm. And so just having a carbon monoxide alarm, um, the technology has gotten really good to where if a carbon monoxide alarm goes off in your home, you need to call 911. Mm -hmm. um, the fire departments want you to do that and let them come out and check and make sure that um, you don't have carbon monoxide in your home okay. because it can be a deadly decision. Now, is there any particular type of carbon monoxide detector we need to get or? No, there's every price point. Mm -hmm. um, that's the wonderful thing about it. So there are some like this model that you could just put on your nightstand. Um, there's travel versions of this. Mm -hmm. A lot of them will just plug into your outlet. And so if you have the ability and don't want to install it, you can plug it into an outlet. And then there are some that either will hook into your smoke alarm or are independent from that. Mm -hmm. And um, But they are a great life-saving tool for your home. As we recommend everyone, if you have an attached garage or any fossil mm -hmm. fuel burning appliance, um, a fireplace, um, during this season a grill that's close to your home or just making sure that you make the choice to have a carbon monoxide alarm. Right, and that, as you were saying, that could be a life-saving um, tool in your home. Absolutely. When you talk about the importance of having the carbon monoxide detector, what are some of the, um, as you're working with families across the country, what are some of the challenges that you're seeing in terms of you know, maybe housing structures being um, outdated mm -hmm. and things? What are some of the things that um, are a concern? Well, uh, carbon monoxide, unfortunately, is one of those things that we've seen um, with the housing changing. So we have a lot of newer housing on the way here. You know, mm -hmm. our area is growing. And so those houses are built a lot tighter than houses before. Um, my grandparents' house, they <laughs> always had a window cracked and you could feel it draft. Uh -huh. So we didn't have as many of those hazards as now. Um, now houses are built to where they're sealed so that they cool and heat more efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, with that though has come the challenge of if carbon monoxide and something's leaking in your home, uh, it can't escape and you're not going to have as much fresh air. And so that's one of the things. Um, we also have some situations where if a family's power were turned off, uh, they need to be able to power their home and so they may be able to mm -hmm. use a generator but um, if you're using generators there's some hazards with that too and with okay. us being in a hurricane state um, right. we have people that use generators so there are some tips for generators um, one is you never bring a generator indoors um, because it emits carbon monoxide. Mm -hmm. um, you want to make sure that it's away from bedroom windows. A lot of times they may have their windows up because their air right. conditioning is off. Right. Um, making sure of that. And so we just want to generally make sure that anything that can produce carbon monoxide, that um, these carbon monoxide alarms, mm -hmm. just a simple less than $20 tool could make a difference in a family's life. Absolutely. So if you're using a generator, mm -hmm. it's best to use it maybe out in your driveway or Absolutely. that far um, away from your, your home? Yes. You want to have mm -hmm. it at least 10 or 15 feet away from your home okay. uh, so that the fumes would not be able to emit um, that. Usually they're really loud and so people want to put them as far away as possible. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we have some people that due to theft, they may 
say, oh, I need to close it up. Well, unfortunately, even closing it up in a garage can mm -hmm. be fatal because that carbon monoxide over time could build up and seep into your house. Mm -hmm. And so we just recommend if you're using a generator, always use it outdoors. Um, you never want to leave it unattended. And then if we had inclement weather, you never bring any type of grill indoors to cook mm -hmm. um, because it can emit carbon monoxide into your home. Excellent information. We're going to take a break and talk more in just a minute. Up next, keeping kids safe in water and in cars. Tar Heel Talk will continue after these messages. As we approach the summer months and all the fun activities that come with it, we want to provide important information to help keep the entire family safe. And for that, we turn to our expert, Kelly Ransdell. She is the ed Regional Education Specialist with the National Fire Protection Association. Kelly, summertime, kids want to get in the water. They want to go to the pool. What are some of the things that they need to be, parents need to equip their kids with to help keep them safe? Well, the cool thing about North Carolina is we have all different types of water. And mm -hmm. so whereas some places it's mostly pools here in our state, we also have rivers and ponds. Yes. We have the ocean. We have mm -hmm. lakes. And so water takes on all different varieties. Right. And so we have to think um, outside the box a little bit and make sure that we talk to kids early on about water safety. And one of the best things you can do as a parent is get your kids enrolled in swim lessons. Mm -hmm. And we have been working with many organizations uh, here in North Carolina. Safe Kids works to do community swim lessons because it is that important. If you can teach right. children to swim, then they have mm -hmm. a lot better chance of surviving and we pr can prevent the tragedies that we see each year. Um, about 300 children die in pools across the U.S. every year and um, that is a really sobering figure mm -hmm. when you think about that. Memorial Day is always the kickoff right. for pool systems. You know, they usually open mm -hmm. this weekend and so you're going to see your community pool, you're going to see um, parks and, and other places that are going to open and so we need parents to be really vigilant um, anytime mm -hmm. they're around water. Um, the cool thing is that um, due to regulations in the state, most of them should have four-sided fencing. And so if a person were to put in a pool, uh -huh. we would want them to make sure they have a four-sided fence. And that way, um, it's less likely that children can waddle into the water, which is what we've seen mm -hmm. in some cases. Um, also to have a self-latching and self-locking gate because then you have to intentionally open it. And usually mm -hmm. an adult has those skills, but a child right. does not. And so having those. And then really, there's a couple of things when you're at the pool. Um, we were just talking about grilling, and the reality is you have cookouts, you have get-togethers. Yes. Mm -hmm. It normally involves some type of water. But the one way that you can protect um, all the children there is to designate a water watcher. I and this love is, that. Mm -hmm. we, this is uh, very cool because we may be sitting and having a conversation, and us sitting by the pool is not really watching what's going on in the pool. So right. this is a water watcher tag, and you are actually designated as the person that will be watching in the pool. And so mm -hmm. they will be doing nothing, not on their phone, not talking to anyone. Their whole responsibility would be to be watching the pool, to be looking on the bottom. Um, and I think this is a great practice, even if you're at a pool that has lifeguards, because depending right. on how many children are there, mm -hmm. um, you may not have enough eyes um, to right. look after your most precious mm -hmm. commodity, which is your child. And so having someone that their full attention is on that child and where they are, um, unfortunately, um, we have seen drowning that people are flailing and you'll hear them and they're drowning, but that is not what we see with children drowning. A lot of times they go under and they may not come back up. It's a very mm -hmm. silent mm -hmm. thing. And so unless somebody is really paying attention, right. they will slip down to the bottom and you may not find them until it's too late. Mm -hmm. And so it's that serious. Right. I like that idea of the water watcher tag and, and those are available. People can just go to your website? Yeah, they can go to the poolsafely.gov mm -hmm. site and order these and it gives you tips on what to do. We also recommend uh, that anyone that has a pool or if you visit one that you take CPR training. Absolutely. Because you may be able to save a life. We want to make sure that. people know that that is pool safely as in pool in a safe way. Yes. Um, as the website as the website so they can get to that and, mm -hmm. and get one of those request one of the cards or yeah. just get some safety tips on on pool safety and I know that you're talking about the importance of CPR and that is something that is 
crucial that can be life-saving for a child, for an adult who may be in trouble in the water. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, we want to have that. You always want to make sure that there's life-saving equipment available. And so a lot of times they may have um, a flotation device that you can throw to someone or a ring when you're at that. Even in a personal pool, we want to make sure of that. Um, but also, um, we brought some examples of okay. You know, what are some approved life-saving devices mm -hmm. and what are some toys? And right, because that can get a little bit confusing. So, so walk us through what you've brought here. Okay. Um, many people are probably familiar with water wings, mm -hmm. and unfortunately water wings are a great little way to give them a little bit of fun in the pool, but they are not a life-saving piece of equipment. And so the typical blow-up water wings um, would be just like this ring. They're fun. Okay. Um, they can be a lot of fun in the water, but they're not considered a life-saving device. Okay, so that's a toy. That ring in the front is a toy. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, these two are both what we call U.S. Coast Guard approved, and the value in that is they've been tested to prevent drownings. And so you'll see they buckle. They're firmly against the child's body. This goes in the front. This goes on their arms, and it's been tested to be able to be used um, both in a lake or in a pool or other mechanisms. Same thing with this. Some may you may see it um, on a boat because there are boating laws that require um, mm -hmm. children to be in life jackets. But also in a pool, this completely prevents them from being able to go under. And so you'll see the straps. This actually hooks underneath between their legs so they can't fall out of it. Okay. And so proper fit is really important with mm -hmm. that. But these are U.S. Coast Guard approved. So when you're doing your shopping, make sure that you look for something that has that personal flotation piece to it. And it's U.S. Right. Coast Guard approved. And look for that U.S. Coast Guard approved. That is, that's major. You want to yes. get that. That separates this type of equipment from the toys. Absolutely. That, you can use so both, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that they primarily have something that will save their life while they're playing with that or even pool noodles. A lot of times people say, oh, we have pool noodles. Well, those are yeah. a great toy, mm -hmm. but they can't save your life. Right. Another important um, bit of information that families need to know when you're talking about keeping kids safe and pets as well is the hot car and how quickly a car can get hot and it doesn't have to necessarily be very hot outside. To Absolutely. Do so. In North Carolina, we have had deaths in cars from February to November. And that's because we can have an 80 degree day in November, we can have an 80 degree day in February, mm -hmm. and then the next day it'd be 30. So in our state, we've seen fatalities across that span. Um, it happens in lots of different ways. Um, there are some children that are forgotten. And in that situation, um, I know a lot of organizations like Safe Kids Worldwide have been working with child care providers to make sure that if a child doesn't get dropped off, that if the parent didn't call and say, we're not coming in to get today, they reverse call and say, hey, we're doing a well check. You didn't drop mm -hmm. off this morning. And that may be the difference between life and death for that baby. Right. Um, these are parents that are really busy. A lot of times they may be a change in schedule or maybe one of the children is sick and they've been up all night and they're just mm -hmm. exhausted. Mm -hmm. um, but just a phone call from that child care provider can make a difference of those children that are forgotten. Uh, the second kind are the ones that their parents think, well, I'll just run into the grocery store for just a minute. And we've had several of those in our area um, where a child's been left in a vehicle and they get in the grocery store and there's 10 people in line. So what they thought would take a minute or two right. turns into 10 or 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that can be a deadly decision. And also, in addition, the child could be abducted and all other things can happen. And so we talk to them about, we use ACT as the acronym mm -hmm. to talk to them about hot cars. And that is avoid leaving a car, a child in a car ever, not even for mm -hmm. one minute, mm -hmm. because one minute can be deadly. And the second one is create reminders. And that is do something that maybe put your pocketbook in the back seat or your iPad or computer. Mm -hmm. So it makes you go in the back seat. And then um, if you see a child in a hot car to call 911, sometimes people are scared to get involved, but um, it takes yeah. a hero yeah. to mm -hmm. call and Absolutely. it can save that child's life. Okay. We're going to take another break and talk more in just a minute. We'll be back with more summer safety tips after these messages. 
Welcome back to Tar Heel Talk. I'm Sonia Williams. Memorial Day weekend marks the unofficial kickoff to summer and summer activities. Things like swimming and grilling and a host of activities in between. Well, throughout today's show, our guest has provided important tips on how to enjoy these summer activities and stay safe doing them. With us again is Kelly Ransdale. She is the Regional Education Specialist with the National Fire Protection Association. We're talking about summer fun, thinking about 4th of July and all the pageantry that comes with it. Fireworks, sparklers, not such a good idea to do at home. <laughs> They're not. And uh, I am as patriotic as the next person and love everything about July 4th and the symbolism. But the wonderful thing is there are many public displays. And in our area, there are so many, um, whether you're in the Raleigh area or even small towns, have public displays and so honestly the only way to enjoy safely fireworks is to go to a public display and um, unfortunately little things like this are sold um, in grocery stores mm -hmm. and also retail stores all over our state and so people think oh if they're sold they must be safe right, right. and so we talk to people about these um, sparklers um, they're probably one of the favorites that mm -hmm. you see even for little children but the problem is that a sparkler burns at 1200 degrees. That is four times as hot as it takes to bake a cake. Oh my goodness. So you can imagine just holding a sparkler, mm -hmm. um, if you had a small child or even an adult and it burns down or those embers fall on your clothes, it can ignite you. And we see a lot of burns as a result of just the fireworks that are sold in our state already. Wow, so definitely stay away from the sparklers. And there are con some consumer fireworks as well that I know the National Fire Protection Association says stay away from those as well. We do. Um, even though every state may be different, um, the only thing that we can tell you which is a safe way is to go to a public display. Mm -hmm. And so um, we've been working hard to educate people on the dangers because people think if they're sold that they're safe. And unfortunately, there's no way to safely use them because one little mistake um, can end up in the J.C. Burn Center here in our state um, or an emergency room. Right. And you shouldn't use them on your cake either. No, right? you shouldn't. If you have that, um, you get mm -hmm. all that gooky stuff um, right on your cake that you're going to enjoy afterwards. But um, if nothing else, if that cake is a reminder that they burn four times as hot as you would have an oven mm -hmm. to cook a cake. Right. So that is extremely hot, can be very dangerous for, for children and for adults. Absolutely. This time of year really year round you're constantly reminding people to check their smoke alarms that's something that's extremely important and can be life-saving as well absolutely well we just launched our theme for fire prevention week um, and the theme this year is don't wait check the date and that is that smoke alarms um, need to be less than 10 years old in order to work properly. Mm -hmm. And so we have some people that may have the ones that they originally got with their home and they're like, oh, I have right. my original like smoke alarms. They're vintage in this mm -hmm. case. Vintage is not good. Not good. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to make sure that they're younger than 10 years old because at 10 years old, the technology, the sensing technology may not work. Even if you change the batteries, that may not work. And so when we talk to consumers about this, we say, Make sure that um, you have smoke alarms inside and outside each bedroom on each level of your home, that they're younger than 10 years old. Um, and you want to test them monthly to make sure that they're working. And if they're interconnected, um, you want to make sure that every place in your house that you can hear them. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody has any hearing difficulty, so senior adults a lot of times um, may be wearing hearing aids. And in the event that they have some type of hearing loss, we want to make sure they can hear the alarm. And then with children, it's really up to the parents to make sure that those children wake up and that they know what to do if the smoke right. alarms go off. Have to and have so a plan. We, we do, yeah. and you got to have a meeting place. And so we want you to designate a meeting place and then practice it with your family during the day. Practice it at night because it's a lot less scary if they actually right. try that. Mm -hmm. And they know what to do and, and feel comfortable with that plan. Absolutely. But want to tell people they can find out more information about the smoke alarms and other fire safety by going to firepreventionweek.org. Lots of excellent tip sheets there um, that will help keep everybody safe. Yes, and cool activities that you can do as a family. Mm -hmm. We have just a, a few seconds left. Any final 
summer safety tips for, for our families as we enjoy this Memorial Day weekend. Uh, just that there are many ways to keep your family safe and we want to make sure that um, you take the time to think about um, the fun things with an activity and also some of the hazards that may be associated with it. Absolutely. Safety is the key. Kelly Ransdale with the National Fire Protection Association. Thanks for being with us. Thanks. That's it for this week's Tar Heel Talk. I'm Sonya Williams. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next week.